Hi everybody, welcome back. It's Miss Ward again with lesson 2B after sunset of spinning earth. I'm so glad you're here. This lesson is going to be great today. I'm really excited about it. Let's get started. So let's start by looking at our sky observations that we made. So I was able to make my second sky observations of the afternoon and I hope you guys were too. This is what I came up with. So I still have that same tree that I had before and I noticed that the clouds were right over the tree and the sun and then also there was some blue sky when I made my observations. So if you look at my two pictures right next to each other, I've got my morning observation and my afternoon observation and what I noticed from these two pictures when I put them next to each other is that the sun was in a different place and the clouds were in a different place. If you get a chance, can you also put your two pictures next to each other of your two observations and see what's the same and what's different? So let me just tell you, this is a good time to talk to your partner, your thought partner about how your two observations compare. So just like I would share with um, Lavender here, how my two observations compare, that's what you can do with your partner. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it right onto an observation chart. So when Lavender and I looked at our sky observations, we noticed there was a couple of things that were in both of our observations. So the first thing we noticed was the sun, okay? Did you guys see the sun in either of your observations? Because I saw, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I saw the sun, which in Seattle, we don't see the sun every day, but I did on both my observations. So did you see the sun on your observations? The other thing that Lavender and I both saw in our observations was clouds. Did you guys see any clouds when you made your observations? There's a cloud. Yeah. So I saw the sun and clouds when I looked up in the sky. What did you guys see? Did you see the sun and clouds? Or did you see just clouds? Or did you see just the sun? What did you see? Okay, so good thing we made some observations of both the morning and the afternoon. And we can move on to other things. Except, wait, what lavender? What did you say? Wait, Lavender has something to say. Lavender, what were you thinking? What, what is that a picture of Lavender? You lying down. Oh, Lavender wants to know what our observations would be like at nighttime when we would be asleep. But we can't make observations of the sky when we're asleep, Lavender. What are we gonna do? Ah, I know. Another thing that scientists do when they're trying to gather information is they read. So we're gonna read a book called After Sunset to find out about what happens at nighttime. And for people, for everybody who's at home, if you have internet access, you can actually get a copy of this book online. Um, if you just go to amplify.com, remote learning, slash science, slash resources, you can find after sunset right there in the first grade folder, okay? So you can find this book online. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this book. Okay, here we go. Um, so here's the cover of the book, After Sunset. And it's about two kids who observe the sky, just like we did together. Um, and they make their observations when it's nighttime, so after sunset. And because this book has two characters in it, I'm gonna invite my daughter Rosie to come be a part of this video. She's gonna help read this book. Say hi to the kids, Rosie. Hi. All right, so let's start by looking at the cover. That's usually what we do when we look at books, right? So let's look at the cover. What are some of the things you notice on the cover of the book after sunset? What do you notice, Rosie? Um, well, I see a girl. 
Yeah, and it looks like she's looking at the sky. The sky is really dark though, up top particularly. Did yeah. you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. What do you guys notice? What else do you see? Okay, while we're reading this book, we are going to make some predictions. We are going to predict as we read and try to um, use what we see in the book to decide what's going to happen next. You know how to predict, right, Lizzie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're going to predict. Hey, come watch the sunset, I called to my little sister. We watched as the sky got darker. Some pigeons flew by. I guess they're finding a place to rest for the night, I said. Let's go inside, said my sister. It's getting dark and we won't be able to see anything. Just wait, I said. There's a lot to see after sunset. We watched the sky until the sun was below the horizon. A few bright stars appeared. Where do the stars come from? My sister asked. The stars are just there, I said. But they weren't there a little while ago. She said. Is that what you think, I asked her. The pigeons go to rest at nighttime and come out in the daytime. She answered. Do the stars go somewhere in the daytime and come out at nighttime? I said, the stars are hard to see in the daytime, but they're still there. When the sky is bright with sunlight, you can't see stars. When the sky gets darker, the stars look brighter. Look at the sky now. We could see many more stars. As we looked up, we saw the blinking lights of an airplane. Airplanes aren't like stars or pigeons, said my sister. You can see them in the daytime when the sky is bright, and you can see them at nighttime when the sky is dark. You're right, I answered. Stars and pigeons and airplanes are not alike. But they are all things we see in the sky, my sister added. Oh, where's the moon? My sister asked. I can't see it. I'm not sure, I said. But I like it when the moon is not in the sky at night. I can see the stars better. Isn't the moon in the sky every night? She asked. No, I told her. Some nights we don't see the moon at all. Sometimes we see the moon in the daytime instead. Suddenly, we saw a streak of light in the sky. Ooh, a meteor, I said. That was cool, she said. Will we see another one? I don't know, I told her. I don't think you can predict a meteor, but I do know we'll see the moon again one night soon. A dark shape flew over our heads. My sister said, Did you see that bat? You were right. There is a lot to see after sunset. Whew. Let's take a break for a second um, because we've already read so much and the children in our books have already observed so many things in the sky during nighttime. Um, Rosie, let's see if we can remember all the things that the two kids in our books, in our book, observed. What are some of the things that they observed? Uh, pigeons. Pigeons. And stars. Yeah. What else? Do you guys remember what else they saw? Pigeons, stars. Uh, an airplane. Right. And... Um, the meteor. Yeah. What else do they call meteor sometimes? A shooting star. A shooting star. Yeah, a meteor. Um, and oh, right on this last page, they also saw bats. So, what else do you out there predict they'll observe in the nighttime sky? What else do you think they're gonna see in the rest of this book? predict that they're going to see the moon because here's why I think they're gonna see the moon because the moon is usually in the sky at night I've seen it before at night haven't you yeah I've seen it. yeah so I think they're gonna see the moon yeah Rosie what do you predict um I think they're gonna see a rocket ship I know <laughs> I know that rocket ships are in space and so 
so since they're looking up it's basically when it's a rocket ship. A rocket ship. So a rocket ship and the moon. That's what we predict. And what do you predict again? All right, let's find out. I pointed to the sky again. Do you see that bright light? Yeah. She said. Is it a star? No, I replied. It's a planet. I think that one is Jupiter. I've heard of Jupiter. She said. And other planets like Venus and Mars. Can we see those? I'm not sure. I don't know if they're in the sky right now. Then I remembered something. There's one other planet that I know you can see. Look down! That's planet Earth! It's funny to think that Earth is a planet, said my sister. It's not up in the sky. Right, I said. We're standing on Earth, but if we were in space, it would look different. Then I saw something that I don't see very often. It was the perfect time to see it. This is your lucky night, I said. Look at that bright light moving across the sky. Keep watching, I said. It's not blinking or making any noise like an airplane. What is it? My sister asked. It's a space station, I told her. It's farther away from Earth than any birds or airplanes, much further. It's so far from Earth that they can look out and see that Earth is a planet in space just like Jupiter or Mars. There are people up there? She asked. Yes, I answered. Rockets take people up to the space station to live. Space station has windows so the people can look down at Earth, I said. They take pictures so we can see what Earth looks like from space. My sister said, I wonder what they see. Hey, come over and see the sunset. Did your predictions about what the kids would observe match what we read in the book? Your prediction was right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I predicted there would be a rocket ship, and there totally was a rocket ship. Yeah, there was the space station. That was great. That was so cool. Well, and I predicted they would see the moon. Mm -hmm. They didn't see the moon, but I still think that was a good prediction. Yeah, it's a good prediction, because that's something that people see in the sky all the time. Right. But we didn't predict everything, right? Um, like, did we predict that they were, they were going to see a planet? No, I didn't think they were going to see a planet. Yeah, I didn't think of that one either. Um, so I already put predict up on our word wall so that we remember that uh, prediction is something that's a really important thing that we do when we decide what might happen. We're going to be doing a lot of prediction. Prediction? Predicting. We're going to be doing a lot of predicting. We're going to be doing a lot of predicting. Um, in this unit. Okay, so let's look at some additional sky observations. So we already talked about what we observe during the day, and now we have all sorts of things that we can add to our chart, right, from what we read in the book. So even though we didn't make the observations directly, yeah. we can get them from the book because scientists do that all the time. As a matter of fact, Rosie, can you add reading? to our What Scientists Do chart. I'll get out of the way so everybody can see. So scientists not only observe, but they also read um, to get some information. So from our observations, we saw that in the sky, you see the sun and clouds. And from our reading, we got a lot more observations. So. What I want you guys to do is just go ahead and tell me all of the different things that the kids in the book observed and I'll add them to the chart as you say them. You ready? Let's see if I can keep track. Yep. All right. So we already have sun, clouds. What else? Birds. Stop. Keep going. Meteor. Bats. Planets. And astronauts in the space station, right? Um, and we might even have other things that weren't in the book, like the moon. The moon wasn't in the book, but I know that some of us have observed the moon at nighttime. And maybe daytime, I've seen daytime. All right, so we also have these vocabulary words to add to our chart. Rosie, can you do this as well? We have daytime. 
Rosie's going to put daytime up there next to predict. There, just put it up there. And we also have, what else? If we have daytime, we also have nighttime. So we've got daytime and nighttime. Thank you, Rosie. All right, and we've added uh, reading to our chart. We did that already. And we read like scientists today because as we read, what did we do? We observed. We observed and predicted. predicted. Okay, we made observations and predictions while we read and we kept track on our chart that we just did. And so we are good to go. See you guys next time. It was bye. really fun. Say bye, Rosie.